JRTC design. This will be regarding styling fillet. So as we can see, this will create a styling fillet on a set of surfaces. Now let's take a look at the functionality of the feature. We're gonna see that the command window will look a little bit differently. So we're gonna have the support, the selection one and two. In this case, I sense I can select those two surfaces. And we're gonna see over here that within the options we have the continuity section. So if I will go with G0 in this case, we're gonna see that we can also change the tolerance over here. But if I will click apply with a G0, even though I set a radius of 50 millimeters, if I will click OK, we're gonna see that the following profile will look like this. So this will be mostly close to a chamfer. But if I will change the continuity to G1, we're going to see also the tolerance over here in degree for G1. If I will click apply, this will add that roundness. And we can also change the radius. So currently this is set to 50. I can change it, for example, to 35. The same radius parameter will be available over here. And we can see that we can also change the arc type to be approximation or to be exact. And in this case, there will be some slightly changes within the profile. We can also go with G2. In this case, this will be the most rounded profile. If I will click apply, we saw that difference. Now we have the following radius over here. With G1, you're going to see that it went a little bit in the, in the back. We can also change the fillet type. So we see that for G2 continuity, we won't have access to the arc type like we had previously. But we can change this to be a shorter fillet. So in this case, if I will leave the value to 35, this will be the value of that shorter, so not the radius. And we're going to see how that fillet will go a little bit um, inwards like this. Or we can change this to be a variable partial fillet. And in this case, we're going to have the um, endpoints. In this case, one over here and one set over here. And we can change those with edit. We can change those. Um, also, the value will be changed over here. So if I want to go from 50 to 15, I will hit apply. And we're going to see how that styling fillet will go. We can also change the point over here. We see the parameters over here. So we can also adjust those. And we can also increase the number of points. So we can also drag and drop those as we intend. Now, some other changes that can be done over here. If you're going to take a look um, over here, we have the result. And we also have the possibility to trim the elements. So by default, over here, I have set this to trim support one and uh, two as well. If I will have those unchecked and click apply, we're going to see that the result will look like this. If I will select to have that trimmed and hit apply and hit OK, we're going to see that afterwards only half of the profile has been trimmed. So if I will also click over here, trim support two and now click apply. We're now going to have the following profile. Over here we have this change because I change um, those endpoints. So I will move it a little bit more inwards. We're going to see how the styling fillet will look now. For some other case studies, I have the following surfaces over here. So these are some splines. And again, we can use a styling fillet over here. I can select one profile and afterwards the other. We're going to have this again set to G2 continuity. So we're going to have that rounded profile. I can click apply and we're going to see that profile. And we can also extrapolate the sides. So by default, this will look like this. We see over here how the endpoints will look in this case. If I will double click on this and I will choose to extrapolate side one, if I will click OK. We're now going to see how that has been extended over here. And we can also choose to relimit the size. As you can see, we can also drag that. So we have the possibility to 
uh, dual limiting as well. And the same over here for the other side, as you can see it over here, for side number two. I can click like this, or I can change that endpoint, and this will give me that resize within the styling field. We also have the possibility over here to do a deviation display. In this case, you're going to see it will look like that. We see the output result listed over here, and the deviation will be listed to the right. So we see with continuity G0, G1, and G2, we're going to have those values. So the maximum deviation for G2 will be 70% in this case. And we can also do a connection between fillet ribbon and support. And we're going to see those appearing over here. So we're going to have those following deviation values. Now, these are the changes for the styling fillet and uh, all the parameters that can be set. We also have the approximation over here, which can be set from default, patch 1, patch 2. And we can also do an independent approximation over here. Now, some other case studies for um, the styling fillet. This can also be used as a trimming tool. Since this is located over here under um, operations near trim, let's take a look at this case study over here. So we have a subdivision, a cylinder, and we have a plane. If I will go with styling fillet, and if I will click on the support to be the plane, afterwards the, um, the cylinder, if I will click apply, we're going to say this will give us the following profile. I will click OK to better visualize that. So we have that trim done, but at the same time, we're also going to have that fillet added. So you can consider that styling fillet has the utility of trimming in this case, but it will also apply that roundness over there. If I will swap the sides over here, we're going to see that we're going to receive the following section over here, and we can also swap this inwards. And in this case, we're going to have the following trim. So we have also the plane kept over here. We have the styling fillet set between that and afterwards the other profile. And again, we can go in this case with a variable fillet. So I can change this like this. So I will want this to be 50. And over here, I only want 20. I will click apply. And we're going to see that in this case, the fillet um, will not work with uh, with various values, with different values. We see a preview over here. So all the way over here, we have that set to 50. And afterwards, it will go um, downwards. And if I'm going to change the continuity, this still will not be processable. So I'm just going to move this a little bit closer. And in this case, again, we're going to see that the profile will not be completed. So usually for sections like this, it's not recommended to try to add a variable fillet because that will not work. But if I'm going to change that, you're going to see that with the default constant value, the surface will be created like this. We can also um, set this inwards. And in this case, we're going to have the reverse. And uh, the last will be this one. So this will be the initial phase that we previously saw. Now, we have over here a cube and a sphere. And in this case, we're going to say that this will work similar again to a trim. So if I will do a styling, I want the support one to be the cube and the support two to be the sphere over here. If I will just click apply by default, Let's take a look at the output of this. So the field is created between the selected input elements, uh, but trimming is incomplete. So it will look like this. If I will try to click OK, we're going to see that we're going to have the following resulting face over here. So we have some overlapping edges over there. This is why Katia doesn't know exactly what to keep after this trim. So we need to define this. If I will just keep all sub-elements, we're going to have the following 
mesh over here. If I will change the value over here for the radius to 20, this should clear some of those overlaps. In this case, we're going to see that this will be again incomplete. But if I will click OK, we're going to have the following profile over here. So we still have a little bit of overlapped elements, but we see the complexity of the shape created by the styling fillet. If I will go with something small like 5, that overlap will no longer be present. But if I will click OK, we're going to see that the result will look like this. So in this case, we only have the bottom section trimmed over here. So let me just delete that styling. And if I will swap the selection, I will select the top sphere and afterwards the cube. I will leave the radius to be 5. I will click OK. We're going to see that the same trimming will, uh, will be done and the bottom section will have that surface. So if I will just extend and have those limit set, that will not change anything. And in this case, if I will swap the continuity, the profile should remain the same. So we should have that bottom section flat and other elements will have uh, the following profile. Now, if I will do the selection starting from the sphere over here and afterwards on the cube, if I will click OK, again, we have the same over here. So if I will just swap the orientation over here, we're going to see that this will only give us the, um, the trim that will result over here. And we're also going to have that radius added over here, which again, we can increase the value. If I'm going to try to go with a value that will be variable, we can have um, some errors occurring over there. So we should adjust those as well. OK, so this was regarding styli styling fillet. As we can see, this is quite similar to trim, but at the same time, it will also apply a fillet. So I hope you enjoy this kind of content. I will position a similar video over here on the left side and the subscribe button to the right. So that's it. Thanks for watching.